Here's a problem to think about. Suppose you've got a bottle. It contains a pure organic substance. You do not know what its structure is. How do you figure that out? Well, back in the old days, that was a seriously daunting task. You needed to systematically determine the chemical reaction that occurred when a variety of reagents were used to treat that compound. Was there a reaction? If so, what did it look like? What did it seem like kind of thing it, it made? Very difficult. Ultimately, you would see if you could break that larger molecule into smaller molecules, so you could tell not just what functional groups are present, but actually what the structures of the pieces were. And then ultimately, you would try to figure out how those pieces fit together. It was a task that could take weeks, months, years. Very difficult. Today, with the pervasive use of instrumental methods throughout organic chemistry and laboratory practice, it often is possible to determine a structure in less than a day if it turns out to be important to do it quickly. And in any case, it's often possible to determine an exact structure with a few hours, really, of applied thought. For complicated structures, it may take weeks or even months in some cases. And once in a while, somebody even gets a structure wrong. But with instrumental methods, typically, in a matter of hours, you can know the exact structure that you have of that material. And that's fantastic. Now, if you're inventing machines that will help you determine the structure of an organic compound, what would you want that machine or those machines to tell you? Just what kind of thing would you say you'd like that machine to tell you? Well, how about molecular weight? In other words, the size of the molecule. And if that machine can do it, it'd be great to have it tell you molecular composition, the actual formula. Uh, numbers of carbons and hydrogens, oxygen, nitrogen, halogens. And that would help a lot. We still wouldn't necessarily know how they were attached to each other. And you wouldn't necessarily know, well, what functional groups are present. Wouldn't it be nice if you had an instrument that would tell you what functional groups are present? And because sometimes the arrangement of functional groups relative to each other is important and special, particularly ones that have double bonds, it would be nice to have a machine that would tell you about conjugated pi systems, double bonds that are linked by single bonds. Now, that would be helpful, but, you know, most organic molecules are mostly carbon atoms. So, wouldn't it be great if we had a machine that would look directly at the carbon atoms?
And that would be information like how many different types of carbon atoms are there, what functional groups are those carbon atoms involved with, stuff like that. And because there's so much of the molecule as carbon atoms, that could be extremely useful. And, well, there are also a lot of hydrogens in almost every organic molecule, so let's say it would be nice to have a technique that could provide information about the hydrogen atoms. And folks, we have instruments regularly and extensively used in organic chemistry for each of these things. The instrumental technique that provides this information is called mass spectrometry. We often abbreviate it MS. This technique that looks directly at functional groups is called infrared spectroscopy. abbreviated IR. The technique that it looks directly at conjugated pi systems, sometimes other things but mostly conjugated pi systems, is called UV visible spectroscopy. The IR is infrared spectroscopy, and the UV visible is also spectroscopy. And an abbreviation for this is UV vis. The technique that looks directly at carbon atoms is called carbon NMR, usually C13 NMR. Nuclear magnetic resonance. We just call it C13 NMR usually. And the hydrogen observation technique is proton nuclear magnetic resonance. That's an S, proton NMR. We don't say H1, we say proton. Because we are not looking at hydrogen atoms, we're looking at the nucleus of a hydrogen. And that's a proton. So these techniques pulled together almost always let you determine what a structure is when you work hardly hard enough at it. We're going to look at relatively simple 
applications of these things, and we are not going to look at the modern permutations that let you go into structure detail with much greater depth. But we'll take a look at each one of these, and let me point out one last thing for now, and that is that this set of techniques here are all spectroscopy They use light of one type or another So they depend on the absorption of electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation. And this guy is spectrometry. Does not involve absorption. of light. So this one, um, this mass spectrometry is different. And we'll talk about it first, and then we'll talk about the spectroscopic techniques. All of them are useful. Combine an extremely powerful set of methods for determining organic structures.